Hello then, welcome to another one. I trust I find you in good spirits. My name is Tatenda. I'm back with another one. I'm alone for now. But the person that I'm with, and today is a special, special episode. One, because we've got a youngster that is coming through. And two, it's because we've got someone that does, just does not get out. You know, one of those kids where you give them a cricket bat and they will never take it, you will never take it out of their hands. And that is exactly who we have today. And the one thing that I love the most about this is I was given a detailed explanation of who this kid is and what he does. And I know this kid because I've been in the cricket circles and I've been in the coaching and whatnot. So I've seen the boy and the talent that he's got. And I'm just so excited that the podcast gets to interview these young kids to hear what they are on about. And a little bit of a, you know me, every time I come on screen and something happens in off, offline, I always tell you about it because my wife is, always says that I'm a much of an oversharer. So we sit down here and I tell the kid that, you know what, but we're going to have a conversation. Don't stress about it. It's like, where must I look? Must I look in the computer as well? <laughs> and I'm like, no, but just enjoy the conversation. And I'm pretty sure that the person that is listening and watching this is going to also enjoy the conversation. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking, for sharing, and subscribing. That way we're going to get more people coming through and more youngsters. So the next kid, score a 100 and you're going to come onto the podcast. Or do get a FIFA or something. That way we know that these people that are servants of the game in cricket for, for, for once. Because someone asked me, can we get servants of soccer? And I'm like, yeah, I would. But I don't know anyone that plays soccer. I'm not even a fan of soccer in that regard. So because it's cricket and I'm a relatively a fan of cricket and a servant of the game, we tend to bring servants of the same game, whether youngsters or oldies. So whoever that is, admin, players, ex-players, coaches, you name it, we want them on the shore to hear them and hear what they are on about. This youngster's name is Sohel and he's got 41 centuries. 41 hundreds. That is insane. You know, one thing is, when we were growing up, I think getting 100 was like, yes, it was something unheard of. Or a team getting 120, 150 would be like, oh, that, that's, that's par. I think it's a winning total. Right now, from one to six, everyone is scoring hundreds like with ease. And this is one player that is doing that. And we all know that when it comes to 100, it takes a great deal of mental strength. And that is exactly why we are here. We want to hear what goes through the mind of a kid that scores hundreds left, right, and center. What goes through the mind of a parent of a kid that will always know that when he puts on his pads, you know that, geez, that's my son. And the dad is going to come through as well. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Sohail. Hello, bud. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say... Hello, coach. How are you doing? No, I'm not coach today, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coach today. My name is Tatenda, and um, I'm so privileged to have you on the show, because I know for sure that each and every person that is going to listen to you, they're going to get something, be it an adult, a player or anyone that wants to get into the game of cricket or sport in general, they're going to get relevance from what you have achieved. And before we get into what you've achieved, I just want to say, wow, but And also, I want to set the record straight. The first time that we batted together, we walk into bat together, uh, I think I was, I faced the first ball, you faced the second ball. And uh, guess what? Everyone always says I'm a very good storyteller because I tell you from A to Z, right? <laughs> so we get in. I, mean, I don't know. Must I say my side of the story? Then you're going to say your side of the story, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, we get in and um, we go through the first over, I think. Then uh, Sohel is facing the next one. So he plays a drive. I think the first one is a dot. The next one, he sweeps. He sweeps it to fine leg. So obviously I'm a non-striker, I'm going to the danger end. Everyone that knows cricket, I'm going to the danger end, that is the keeper's side. So as we are crossing, I say, your call. Literally, I shouted, your call. Then when I turn, so it was halfway through. So obviously it means that I have to take the single. So I have to take the two, rather. So I'm coming back, then he gets run out, like, coach, you ran me out. <laughs> what is your side of that story? Let's, let's, let's let them be the judge of this. Uh, so I swept the ball to fine leg and I ran, slid my bat in for one. Then I turned and I saw you were still running. 
So I waited a bit. And I think I should have just carried on. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Uh, yeah. It's fine. It's in the past. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, I love you, my boy. <laughs> and uh, it was not... Uh, it was not intentional. <laughs> we live and learn. Yeah, yeah. What an, um, anyway, who is Sohel? I think that's the first question that anyone would ask. When we say we're bringing someone onto the show, the first question the whole team will, will, will speak about is who is that person? So, in your own words, who is Sohel? Uh, I think Sohel is a very talented young man, a very hardworking person. Um, I do a lot of practice almost every single day of the week. Uh, I try my best to stay humble, and I just, at the end of the day, want to have fun. Yeah. What does that mean, you try your best to stay humble? Do you just go, you know, Dad, today I am working super hard to be humble. What does that mean? Mm, being humble, I think it means that, um, say, over the weekend, you scored 100. Don't come back on Monday morning, go to all your friends and show off and boast about it. Rather, keep quiet and rather wait for like school to call you up on stage and announce it rather than going and boasting it to everyone. Do, do you think it's boasting? And I love that about you, that you are so humble. That's one thing for sure. I was telling my wife as well beforehand, and like, he's like, uh, she says, like I said, I've got no secrets here. So he says, what's so special about this person that is coming through? And I'm like, this boy has got 41 centuries. And more than that, he's just a humble kid. Like literally... You see him, even if I'd seen you 10 years later from now on and you're playing in the IPO or something, you would still refer to me as coach. And it's not like we've had interactions, me and you, where I'm like, you know what, I'm your coach. And like what other coaches would take credit for? You see that kid is playing for South Africa, I'll coach that kid. With you, there's so much humbleness, but still, you say you score 100 on the weekend, you're not going to brag about it or you're not going to say things about it. Don't you think that is not appreciating the hard work that you've put in over the weekend? Because you don't just wake up to score 100. You graft hard for that 100, isn't it? Yes. So I think, yes, you can tell a few people about your... Like, say to them in a very nice manner, not in, like, a very mean manner where you're making them feel bad. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how you're saying you say it in a nice way, not in a mean way. But then we find that a lot of players... Take, for example, Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli does not strike me as that kind of guy. That He's humble in his own regard, but there's a sense of arrogance and confidence that comes with being Virat Kohli. That's why he does what he does. Do you think that part of the reason why you've been so successful is because you've chosen to be you, not to be someone else? In as much as, yes, I'm pretty sure you've got someone that you look up to in the cricketing world or players and whatnot, but do you think that you've gone about your business as Sohel, not because you want to be AB, not because you want to be Sash, not because you want to be Virat Kohli or Roy Cham or whatever the case might be? Do you think that you've just been so true to yourself that everything else that anyone does matters, doesn't matter to you? Mm, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's amazing. Thank you. You've got 20 hundreds for school. 20 times 100, that's what, over 2,000 runs for school. And what, you just turned 16? 15. Yes. Yeah, see. 15 years old and you've got 20 hundreds for school, yet we never hear about, geez, so hell, this kid is amazing, this kid is quality. We know your quality. And I always say that when you're playing cricket, let your bat and your ball do the talking. A lot of times, yes, kids want to have big heads because oh, I've achieved this, I've achieved that. Is it because your parents have raised you in a way that you don't have to brag about it, you just have to let your bat do the talking? I think so. My mom and my dad always tell me to stay down to earth after scoring runs. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been that kind of kid that you want to, to boast? Uh, then they're the one that will be like, hey, <laughs> don't. Yeah. <laughs> so it has happened. Mm. <laughs> what, what made you want that kind of boasting? What were you trying to achieve? I, wanted, I, I do it at home. I don't do it often in school, but I do it a lot at home. Mostly because my sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that, that kind of rivalry between mm. sister and, and, and brother. How old is your sister? My sister is 12. Wow. Does she play sport? Yes. What does she play? She plays um, karting softball. Nice, nice. I never understand softball. What is softball? 
It's like cricket. It, it's similar. It's more like baseball. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. So they, they run in a, in a circle yeah. like, like yeah. baseball does. Okay. Yeah. But then she's representing Gauteng. Yeah. I cannot wait to have your father sit there and like, how is it possible that you just have children that keep on excelling? <laughs> <laughs> I see you're wearing your lion's top. And um, with the podcast as well, we've got an understanding. We've got a, um, a business deal with lions to bring players like you, youngsters or player, club cricketers that are doing their most to make sure that the club cricketing scene is as good as uh, the school cricketing scene. Have you found the transition from school cricket to club cricket any different for you since you started playing for Max Park? Uh, yes, very different. Um, school, school, I just look to have fun and score as many runs as possible and just have a good time with the boys. At club, I take it seriously and uh, play my game, uh, do, a, what, what, um, do everything that my coach has told me to do and just enjoy enjoy it at the end of the day. Don't enjoy it, yeah. yeah. What what have you what challenges have you faced so far playing club cricket? Um so the, dif the difference between school and club, uh school the bowlers um they aren't that quick and they aren't that experienced and they don't have um well they're not that smart but when you go to club and when I play for Marks Park the bowlers they have a plan to get you out and the bowling is much faster. They the spinners turn the ball more and it's a lot harder. Yet you've got more not outs than outs. So that means the plan for getting you out is not working then. <laughs> <laughs> could, you say, could you say you're just too good, right? You can't get me out. Come on, James. Once I've got the bat in my hand, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm not going out. Is there a mentality or do you plan your innings beforehand? What, what's your thought process before walking in to bat? Um, my thoughts are just put the nerves away. Uh, so before, usually before I go on to bat, I'll watch the bowlers warm up and see who's quick, who's a good spinner, and then I'll just prepare myself for that. Like, say, don't chase the wide ones and just play straight in the first few overs and watch the ball all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see here, your, your, your dad mentioned, um, your dad did all the work for me the stuff that I was supposed to find out myself and then boom, it just gives me through. And that is credit to the kind of support that you get from your mom and your dad or your family. Yes, you and your sister are always teasing one another, but you can see that there is a clear thought process from your parents to you and you guys understanding one another, say this is what we are trying to achieve and this is how we're gonna go about it. Do you have those sit downs with your dad to discuss your mental health, to discuss your your overall balance between your school and your sport? Because in as much as, yes, you are excelling in your cricket, your academics have to take um, yeah. uh, a front row seat as well. Yeah. You can't, cricket is a very short uh, career. So by the time you're 25, 30, maybe there's an injury that happens. If school was not a priority, then you're gonna find yourself struggling. Mm. Do you have those kind of sit downs and chats with your dad with regards to your future? Yes, I do. So usually, um, like after practice or something, I come home, I tell my dad that practice was good or bad. Then maybe like say that practice was the day before a test and he'll ask me, how much studying have you done? And then I'll tell him and he always tells me, study till late and then wake up early in the morning and study more and do extra well in the test. How do you balance the two, the school and the cricket? Because the, the schedule is harder. Yes, because now it's peak cricket season or towards the end of it and practice is every week and I've also got club practice and it's very hard to find the time to study but uh, I, st I stay up a bit later and study. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's a long day, you long day in the sun and yeah. you still have to study but I guess it's a sacrifice that you're, yeah. you're willing, you have to go through so that you can achieve what that which you want to achieve and uh, amazing stuff. So we spoke about the 20 hundreds that you've got, but here I see here it says, um, uh, you played under 16 the, uh, the Jersey Cup uh, in 2023, that's two years up. You were playing with bigger boys. Do you think that that's the reason why your club cricketing career has hit up? Because you've always been playing with bigger boys. I think even when you came to Randberg, you were like a 12, 13 year old, and you're playing up against oldies, and you still had the the distance, so you still had the, 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 
the the courage to still go forward and play the shot and express yourself. Do you think that's the reason why the Jersey Cup has put forward um, the, that that ability or that that courage to say I can do it? If you can play with 16 year olds and you were 14, 13 years of, uh, old at the time, but you were 14 years, do you think that's the reason why it has become easier for you to excel in club cricket with seniors? I think so, because when, when I play ages above, it's a much harder challenge. So I like, I like a challenge. I like how it pushes me to do my best. And yeah. Yeah. Look at, look at Sachin Tendulkar. Have you followed Sachin Tendulkar? Yeah. He was 16 when he mm -hmm. made his international debut. That's coming to you. Imagine you in Sachin's shoes and you're in Australia and you've got your Mitchell stacks and whatnot and they're coming at you. Just fathom a 16-year-old facing such. And that's exactly what, what's happening to you. Because in club cricket, boys are quick. And most of those boys, you're playing, against, you're playing with Zubair Hamza, you're playing with first-class cricketers, you are getting so much, um, Camilla Rue as well, you are getting so much experience from those guys. But also, imagine having a 16-year-old facing older boys and you still have the courage to say, I can do it. Is it credit to your dad that has always been hard on you? Has your dad been hard on you? Or have your parents always been hard on you to say you can still play against or outside of your comfort zone? My mom and my dad, have they've been very hard on me. They've always pushed me to play, to do my best and to play to the best of my ability, especially when I play um, old, for older ages, like under 16 and under 18. They always tell me just do what you do and have fun. Yeah, yeah. So for you, it's always have fun. Yeah. I think that, that's the important thing about cricket as well, because I still remember when Jacques is retired, they asked him, why are you retiring at your peak? And he said, I'm, you're not, he's not enjoying it. And here you are, no matter what challenge you're being given, you're still saying, you know what, I have to enjoy. So the enjoyment part is something that takes priority in your playing cricket. That's why would we say that's why you're excelling? Yes, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of the main things that I do um, when I play cricket. I'm always seek to have fun because uh, when you're not having fun, um, it you don't really enjoy the game. You, you just like zone out. So just always seek to have fun and enjoy the game. And enjoy the game. Awesome stuff. You were number seven, so you play against sixteen-year-olds, and there's more than two hundred teams. And you still come out as number seven, and nothing in you says, you know what? Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm killing this cricket thing game. And your dad still says, stay humble. When it was mentioned that you were number seven, what was what went through your mind? Uh, I think firstly I was very happy with the result, and then next thing my dad says, very well done, make top five next time. Ah, dad, come on. <laughs> So in other ways, dad does not want you to be comfortable. He does not want you to stay in the comfort zone because nothing grows. So if you're saying you're number seven, then that means now push it. Let's go to number, number, um, number five. Uh, this year's Jersey Cup is coming up. What are you hoping to achieve? And before you answer what are you hoping to achieve, what has the Jersey Cup done for you and for your career? Um, Jersey Cup has done a lot for me. So... Three, like two years ago, I played for under-14s and I won um, batsman of the tournament and player of the tournament. Uh, after that, they, I met a man by the name of Hussein, Hussein Manak and he took me in, he brought me to Mark's Park and he's now my coach. So it's done a lot. He's taught me many things and I try to use these things as much as I can in the game. What, what is the one thing that he's taught you that you did not know prior and you are using that in every game? Because Hussein Manak is a big name. He is a servant of the sport and he's done so great um, with the game. What is the one thing that he's taught you that you can say, this is one thing that I've grasped and I'm taking it wherever I am and I've been successful? I think um, during primary school, uh, I used to just hit the ball, hitting the gaps. But then when I went to Coach Hussein, he told me about how to rotate strike properly, how to pick the gaps, how to run hard. And I think that has changed my game a lot. How do you do it? 
Yeah. You're talking to someone that's watching here and they're thinking, this guy just mentioned something so powerful, yet I don't know what he's talking about. What does it mean to hit the gap hard? What does it mean to rotate strike? What does it, yes, rotating strike is moving from non-striker to striker, but what does that exactly mean in Hussein's words? That Because right now, as you're speaking, you're becoming a coach. When someone is listening to this and I'm like, so he'll say this, I'm going to put that in my game, or I'm going to try that at practice, or I'm going to try that at my next game and see how it works out. And you're like, geez, thank you, Coach Sohel, that worked out really well, because you're a senior and you've got a lot of youngsters that are looking up to you. Um, what is what you just said? Um, so, how to rotate strike. Um, firstly, uh, just look at your boundary fielders and try to hit the ball towards them, get a strike. Also, don't play risky shots to get a strike. Rather, wait for a ball that's there to push in the gap because don't take a ball that's not there and try to play it somewhere else and then top edge and you're out. Rather, wait for the ball, play it on merit. And also, when placing in the gap, um, I think just remember where the gaps are firstly. Remember, don't remember in the fields. I don't look at the fielders. Rather, look at the gaps and then play the ball on merit. Play the ball in marriage. Did you hear that? A 15-year-old is telling you to play the ball in marriage. Yet you've got guys that are running down from first ball and being bold. <laughs> so um, you've got nine district and provincial hundreds. You seem to not get away from this hundred game. What is the difference between school cricket and uh, provincial or district cricket? Uh, school cricket, school cricket is a lot more fun for me because I'm there with my friends, we're having a good time. But then when I go to district cricket, um, I take it a lot more seriously. I uh, just look to score as many runs as possible, and do the best that I can. Yeah, and it seems like, because now you're looking at 900s and in district, but 12 in, uh, in club cricket, it seems like it has become so easy for you to excel in club cricket, yet we are saying when you're playing district, it's all boys that are almost of the same skill level but you're still a cut above that. Is it because you jumped into playing club cricket or senior cricket a lot earlier in your life than before? Were you scared before your dad, because obviously the decision comes with your dad, to say, don't you want to step up a little bit? Were you not scared that, like, geez, I'm going to face these big boys, and what if they hurt me? And the boys, it's painful. When you get hit by a cricket boy, it's painful. Do you, were you scared before that happened and look at it you've got 1200s now in club cricket but obviously before then you were thinking what if what if i fail yeah so when i was 12 i joined sc3 at ramberg and well, i still remember i had nerves mm -hmm. and it was very scary because i think my first game uh i was a coach ayanda i batted yeah. four and you it was very tough <laughs> Because it was such a big step up from school schoolboy cricket. The bowling was much faster. We were playing with adults. Um, they were a lot smarter. They knew the game more, and it was a very big challenge. Yeah. What did you learn from Coach Ayanda at the time? Coach Ayanda just taught me to put my nerves away. And the one thing that I remember from Coach Ayanda was, when I was small, I used to just hit everything on the ground and in the gaps. But he told me that if it's there to hit, you must hit it. I think that's one thing that I'll never forget from Coach Ayanda. Wow. And, and that comes back to um, self-belief as well. Mm. If it's a half volley, it's a half volley, regardless mm. of who is bowling it. It's a half volley. It just needs to you to commit to the shot and play it. So I love that all these different coaches are coming through and they are impacting a little bit. Hussein Manak is coming in and telling you to rotate strike. Coach Ayanda is telling you to believe in yourself. Your dad is telling you you don't want to be number seven, you want to be number five. Your sister, in other hand, is telling you that, no, she's presented, she represented Gauteng and you haven't. Or you have, yes, but then at the same time, all these things, they're just moving along to make sure that you become the best player that you, you can possibly be. 41 hundreds all in total. And I know for sure there's been failures more than successes. How have you dealt with the time that Soyo gets out with a zero? Does that make you a bad player? Soyo gets a hundred, does that make you a, uh, a good player? How have you dealt with that mental of, yeah, today I went out or 
for the next three, four games, I haven't been able to score more than 10. How have you balanced that when you fail? Because when it comes to life or cricket, we fail more than we succeed. So you've got 41 hundreds, you could have possibly be 100 hundreds. But it's not because you are failing more than you're succeeding. How have you kept a balance between the two? I think whenever I go out for a low score and maybe I gave my wickets away or maybe I got a good ball, my dad always comes and he reminds me of something that Sachin Tendulkar said. Sachin Tendulkar said that he never worried about his past, whether he, about his last match, whether he scored 100 or he scored that. He was always worried about the next match, how he was going to play in the next match, what he was going to do in the next match. Wow. Dad is so wise. Eh? <laughs> ah, yes. It's when I grew up, I wanted dad like yours, but he's so wise. Amazing. Great stuff. 4100s, and what are we hoping to achieve? Are you going to play Jersey Cup this year? Yes. And uh, what are we are we aiming? How many runs did you score last year mm. in total? Last year in total from everything? No, no, Jersey Cup. Jersey Cup. Yeah. I am not sure. Roughly, let's just give a, let's put a number to it. 200. So are we looking at 300 this year? Yes. Or 400? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think this year... Um, I'm one of the older boys now, so I think I, that I should improve from last year. I see, I see. Awesome. We wish you all the best, so yeah. And Thank like you. you said, whatever you do, make sure you keep your head down. And a lot of times, a lot of good players, they fall through the cracks of, cracks of the system, not because they are not good, but because they became big-headed. And being humble is so important that whatever that you achieve, you know that you have still have to put the work in. Because you can't just wake up and say, nah, you know what? For me, it's easy. I can score a hundred. I can score a double hundred any time, and it's, it's nothing. You understand? Cricket will humble you. And Sachin Tendulkar once said, "The one thing that he's learned over his span of his career was anyone can get you out any time. So you can look at a player that is playing SU. I don't know. Is it SU? I think the last one is supposed to be SU eight. A player from SU eight can get a prem guy out or a first class player out because that's the nature of the game." There's always going to be that ball that is written your name and you can't do anything about it. You either kick it or it gets you bowled or you mistime it, you get caught. But the importance of staying humble in everything that you do is so important. And we are watching you. A lot of eyes are on you. A lot of eyes are rooting for you from the background. I, for one, as well. Each time I see a comment or each time I see a post from your mom and your dad, I get proud that this is a kid that we watched growing up. And this is a kid, you walk into Wanderers and there's you on the billboard. And I, I haven't told my wife about that because every time we had the Wanderers, I wanted to tell her, you know that kid, he was on the podcast. Because everyone is watching and everyone is looking at you and we just want to wish you all the best. All the hundreds, all the two hundreds. But before you go, I want you to get me through. Do you remember the game that you scored 300 not out? Yes, I do. Check me through that game. Oof, it was a very warm morning. Uh, it was for the Trinity House Commonwealth A Festival. Uh, we played Westville A that morning. Um, I went to toss. I won the toss and I chose to bat. And so my Obviously, coach, win the toss bat, lose yeah. the toss bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember padding up and telling myself, right, you got the whole day to bat. You see if you can bat the whole day. And so when I play 50 overs on Saturdays for my age, my dad challenges me at the full 50. Wow. That always challenges me wow. to do that. And um, I've done it a few times. But I'd like to do You've some You've got more not outs than <laughs> outs. And that takes a great deal of fitness. How do you yeah. balance? Because before you score 300, you have to be mentally and physically fit. Yeah. It's hot, one. And two, maybe the other guy is not running as hard as you want to, so there's frustration as well. Yeah. Maybe the fielders are very good. They're stopping the ones, not making them into a two or stopping the boundaries. So there's always frustrations in and around scoring that bigger total. Are you, what keeps you fit? Uh, just, um, I do a lot of sports. I do cricket and then I do hockey. You run a lot in hockey. So I play um, attack in hockey. And then I also do athletics. I run 100 meters and 200 meters in athletics. Jeez, is there anything that you can't do right, but 
<laughs> awesome stuff. Thank you so much. We're going to take a five minute break or a minute break so that Soyo can just shift. Then we can have a chat with his dad. Amazing stuff from the young man. If you're there in the comment section and you want to ask him any question, please go ahead. And we're going to send the questions to him and have a follow up video to answer each and every question or leave out somewhere, somehow that you can get in contact so that you ask questions uh, with regards to your game and what you want to achieve or what you've achieved and how you want to keep a balance of that. Um, lastly, before you leave, what advice would you give to a youngster that is sort of scared to transition to club cricket and what club cricket or senior cricket is about before you leave? I think um, my advice to the youngsters is um, don't worry too much about it. Just look to play a game, calm the nerves, throw the nerves away, and more importantly, just enjoy it at the end of the day. Uh, club cricket, it is a big step up. Uh, the bowlers are going to get a lot faster. The, the spinners are going to turn the ball more. Uh, they're going to chirp you a lot. That's one thing you must you must be ready for, the chirps. Yo, <laughs> I've been chirped many, many times. And, it's, it's, it's and you nice can't sometimes. even tell Dad, Dad, they're <laughs> chirping me! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just block the chirping out and, I don't know, do something like Sometimes I'll sing a song in my head when the older guys are chirping me. And even if you hear what they're saying, don't take it personally. Rather, tell yourself, I'm going to rather let my bat do the talking. Awesome. Awesome. So, yo, you've been amazing. All the best with your future endeavors. All the best with more hundreds. All the best with your leadership skills as well and your school. And uh, we're watching you. All the best, father. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Now we're going to have dad, dearest, to come through and uh, have a chat to us quickly and briefly. So you can shift and dad can come and sit. What's up, fam? It's your boy, Alake. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much. Anush, thank you so much and uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Um, for you being an Uber driver, I understand that you're a busy dad and there's other things that you could be doing, but you are here chatting to us. But the one question that I always have, especially with kids that are succeeding, well done on your kids succeeding, that's one. And um, we always say that every parent expects, expects the best from their kids, but not taking away the fact that whatever that they're doing is a team skill or it's a team sport. So, they are co their contribution and their other kids' contribution is equally as important into the development. How does that resonate with you as a parent? Obviously, when he was born, you knew or you wanted him to succeed, but you never pictured any of this. How have you kept a balance and a cool head to say, mm, I think we've done a good, wo a, a good job raising this kid? No, th thanks, uh, Tatenda, and thanks for having us. I think uh, it's hard work. I think not just for myself, but for uh, my wife as well. Yeah. With the running around and I think the various coordination and all of that, yeah. it, it's hard on us. But I think, you know, what's important for me is for him to have fun. I think he said that a few times and uh, it's very important for him to know he's not playing for me uh, and I'm not trying to achieve anything through him. Wow. And that's something I always tell him. I said, if you hit 100, buddy, that's your name behind that run, wow. it's not mine. Wow. Right. Wow. So you, you and uh, there's no expectations. Uh, honestly, honestly, for many years now, uh, the way we run things at home with cricket is we will analyze the game. If I'm at the game, I analyze the game. I look at it. Uh, sometimes he'll hit 10 and I'll tell him a great 10. I loved that 10 uh, because you did everything right. You got a good ball and you got out. If you get that ball tomorrow, you'll probably get out again. Yeah, it happens. And yeah. sometimes you hit 100 and I say, it was 100, but it wasn't the greatest 100 <laughs> because there yeah. were a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. So we focus a lot on you know, uh, fixing the technique. We focus a lot on the mental side of it. The runs are completely irrelevant. We, we don't discuss runs. Wow. Wow. Amazing how you're saying that you're not trying to live your dream. And I think a lot of parents, that's, that's our sort of our weakness, that maybe dad could not make it because there was politics in the game and maybe an injury and whatnot. And you're like, I was talented and I could not make it and I want my kid to do that. And then when the kid wakes up and says they hate that game, you're going to feel like, geez, they've disappointed you. And it's important, it's important that uh, you're saying you're not trying to live your dream through him and that takes away a little bit of pressure off him like you're saying that you guys walk in and like yes you scored a 10 and you were looking great 
you got a hundred, but I think there was four or five chances that you missed there. And in as much as you're applauding the hundred, but you're also putting into perspective, how did it come about? Is that, did someone sort of give you that head start when it comes to being a cricket parent to say, this is how you're then going to speak about it. Was your dad doing the same thing to you or did you see that from another parent and like, I think that's the approach that I want to take with my kids. Tatenda, I think, you know, our parents support us quite a bit, but it's, it's a very different level of support that we have to give to youngsters. You know, back, back in my day, you know, we had one, one kid with two bats and, yeah, you, you know, yeah. right? and then you have to change. we, we yeah, hiked yeah. often yeah. to the ground yes, and we hiked yeah, back home. Yeah, that's, yeah. That was the reality. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, importantly, what I see is I see talented cricketers, all ages, uh, that just don't perform. And when I overhear conversations in the side of the field and I overhear the kids and I overhear the parents, I can quickly pick up why those kids are not performing because they are under pressure to deliver because my dad is here, my mom is here, and I'm expected to hit a 50 or a 100. Mm. And I think you know, the more I see of that, the more I see these youngsters either crumbling, not being able to perform, not liking the game, don't want to play, uh, but you know in your heart those are really talented the boys. Talented boys. Yeah. It, it's really sad that we end up losing talented players because I believe that every kid is special in their own regard. But when you hear, I was with uh, Coach Tabani in the podcast uh, a few weeks ago, and he says one of the kids would say, whenever dad or mom stand up and walk around the field, I get nervous, and boom, I can't concentrate anymore. And a lot of times, yes, maybe mom and dad are trying to push but then the way they are pushing, maybe the kid does not like it. Do you think you and Sohel have had that understanding that how do you want me to support you? Did you ask him such questions? Where, Because I can sit here and say I'm supporting you by pushing you and say, yay, hit it straight, play straight, and do this, do that. But maybe the player himself does not want it in that regard. Did you guys have that sort of discussion say, Dad, I want your support, Mom, I want your support, but I want it like this, this, and this. That's why it's been successful. Yes, I think, I think it's, it's evolved to that, definitely. We are at a stage, I think, now where we understand exactly what's expected of each other. And I think what's important is my support is for Sahel is what he wants of me. Mm. It's not what I think I should be giving him. Yeah. It's what he wants of me. Yeah. And we always try to understand, what do you want of me? You know, wow. How do you want me to support you? Uh, even you know, if, if I think Sahel is uh, playing a shot incorrectly, uh, I'm not a super coach, I'm not a professional coach, but mm. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll either pass it on to Hussein, we'll work on it, but sometimes I'll tell Sahel, I saw you doing this, maybe try that and see if it works. If it doesn't work, it's fine. don't Chuck worry, it don't worry. chuck yeah. it away, yeah. chuck the advice yeah. away, yeah. but I just saw maybe you know, you're doing something wrong, uh, try it something differently, maybe try it like this, or maybe try it like that, just try it, if it doesn't work, chuck it away. It's fine, yeah. wow. Wow. And uh, Amazing. That's, that's, how we, that's how we work. You know, I'll always try and spot things in the game I think he's not doing right. And the approach then is to say, I spotted this, or if we have a video, have a look at the video, uh, we agree, and then maybe I'll guide him as to what I think he should do, or maybe Hussein will guide him. And I'll always tell him, but if you're uncomfortable with the guidance, go back to what you think wow. is going to work. Wow. Amazing. That, that, that's, that takes a great deal of maturity as well from a dad and a player to understand that I think it's because Soyo understands that whatever you're advising is coming from a good place or whatever you're saying is coming from a good place. How have you then managed to balance his academics and his sport? Because it's not every day where you find a kid that is excelling in school and on the cricket field. It's always one or the other, which is not bad in that regard where you look at Faf Duplice, he says, he even mentions it in his book that he was nowhere with his school yet he's excelled on the cricket field. But then you don't want that for your child where you just focus on one thing. What if it doesn't work out? Because like I said in the earlier when I was speaking to him that the cricket journey or cricket career is very short. The moment there's an injury that's recurring, then you're screwed. And if there's no school, then you're, what else are you going to fall back on? How have you managed to keep a balance so much so that he understands that even though he sleeps late or wakes up early to try and cover the the, 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 the the studying because the cricket game is long. So for you to come out of the sun and still have to look at the books, it's going to be tough. How have you kept a balance for him to understand? Because he, at the end of the day, he's still a kid. 
he wants to have fun with his friends. He wants to go play with his friends. And for him to get balance, it has to come through you. How have you made that your understanding of how school is important to come to him and have him understand that, hmm, okay, I have to balance the two? I think, firstly, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to make him understand that sport, and especially cricket, is the biggest humbler. I think, as you said, you've yeah. got a duck today and you've got a hundred tomorrow and you've got a duck the day after. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. You don't know where you're out of emotions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and one day you're going to play for South Africa, one day you're not going to play for South Africa. And, yeah. uh, and, and we, we understand that, firstly. And I think, importantly, uh, it's easy. At my house, it's very easy to attend that. Wow. I'm in charge of sport. My wife's in charge of academics. Wow, <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So, homework and why not? Like, it's on you. So, so uh, you know, when, when we're at a cricket field, um, so, so we, we like to play club cricket on a Sunday. Uh, but often we have to negotiate for it at home. Because <laughs> okay. especially if there's a Wednesday school game and Thursday and Friday's club practice and Saturday the school games, then you know you've, you're going to have to write a strong motivation for oh, my okay. wife as to why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so he, got, he got away this Sunday because it is his birthday, so he managed to play and, uh, uh, and good on him. Yeah. But uh, I think, no, look, definitely is, uh, is, is you have to strike that balance, I think. Uh, you know, I think no matter what sport you play, and I always tell him, and we joke, but I think the, you know, the point is crucial. Uh, I always joke with him and say, uh, you're 15 now, you want to be a cricket player. When you're 16, you might want to be a ballet dancer. Mm. And things change. You, you're still 15. You, know, you, you haven't settled into really there, what you're There's do. still so much. Yeah, at this point, that's what you're going to do. But 16, things could change. 17, things could change. You know, a, and then what happens to the cricket dream? So at least have something to fall back on. Wow. And I know I use the uh, example of uh, Kumar Sangakkara. You know, I know he's got a degree behind him and yes. he's got good yes. qualifications yeah. behind him. Yeah. And I, I read an article once on him. So we, we use that mm. um, quite often. Wow. And just say, have something to fall back on. Yes, we want to support you. And yes, we hope one day you can play professionally. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if it doesn't yeah. happen, uh, you know. Uh, there's always something There's something else. to fall yeah. back on. There's yeah. always something. Amazing. Uh, Manoj, thank you so much for, for you guys coming through. What advice, lastly, before you leave, what advice would you give to a parent that they don't know how to support their kid, one, and maybe the kid is not going in the ways of their advice? Because the first advice is to come from dad, especially dads and sons there is always going to be that loggerhead between dad and sons because dad is saying, do this, and you're going to do it whether you like it or not because dads are strong individuals, and sometimes kids are soft. Yes, they may be boys, but then that's why we call them mama's boys because they are soft at heart. They always want mommy close by. What advice would you give to that dad that is hard on and say, this is how we're supposed to do things. If you don't do it, you may as well bugger off. What advice would you give to such a parent? I think... The biggest advice is, you know, what my son said. Allow your kid to have fun. Um, let's not try and put them under so much pressure where they can't perform. I think the kids, you know, let them develop. Our, our job as parents is really to, to nurture them and support them. Uh, in terms of the game of cricket, unless you have a coaching background, the game has evolved. The tender when I played cricket... You know, in 50 overs, 200 was a par score. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. got 250 in 50 like, overs, uh, that was a winning score. Like, you know, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, and, yeah. You know, and, and I mean, the game has evolved so much, you know, in terms of the, 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 how the batsmen attack it, the way they play. I mean, we were still taught to roll your wrist when you square cut. Now mm. they're taught to uppercut it for six. <laughs> exactly. You know, and the game exactly. has evolved. And, yeah. and you know, you, we as parents, we think we know everything we don't. Let's, you know, let's get them the right help if they need it. Let's get a coach that knows what they're doing. And our job is just there to support them, uh, especially when, when those moments come when they, there's failures, to be there and tell them they can do it. Yeah. Uh, to let them also you know, figure a lot of it out themselves. I think a lot of it you can guide, you know, uh, but let them figure it out uh, themselves. Yeah. I have on my uh, status uh, at my work phone and, and at home, I said, I can always show you where to look, but I can never tell you what to see. Jeez. So same with Sohail. I can show you where to look. What you see is what you see. Wow. And I think that's, that's how we need to live it. Wow. And I'll give an example. He went on tour for the first team in, in, in January to Grahamstown. And they had, I think, about four or five games lined up. And he was playing for the first team. And uh, he normally opens or he bats up the order. Mm. And I told him, have lots of fun. And then he had a chat to me and said, Dad, but you know, how many runs should I hit? And you know, what would be reasonable? What do you think would be reasonable? I said, OK, I have a target for you. The whole tour, 
once you reach three runs, you've passed my target. Oh, then man. you play for yourself. Oh, man. Yeah. So that's, I think let's, let's support wow. them like that. That's, 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 no, that's next level. I was thinking you're going to say, yeah, yeah, hit 300 then. Yeah. So the moment you say three, that's, that's nothing. Literally, it's a boundary. And like, oh, okay. And so then now I have fun. He doesn't, he doesn't need to worry about his death target because we have no targets. So if you want my expectation, it's three runs. Once you get it three runs, it's on you now. It's on you. Do wow. what you think is right. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to leave it on. I can show you where to look, but I cannot show you what to see. Wow, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much, Manoj. It's been amazing. It's been a pleasure to to have you guys in studio, and I know we're gonna bring you guys back and back and back because from now on you are friends of the show, and really appreciate it. And Aya was actually chatting to you guys um, on his birthday, and he's like, "Wow," because I sent him. Aya is our content producer for the show, and I sent him. I'm like, "No, I spoke to Manoj, and uh, so he was gonna come." Then he's like, "Wow." I was actually chatting to them as well. So you can see that it's such a small world and we're always watching and we're always seeing and we appreciate the support and uh, coming all the way. You could be sleeping right now or you could be studying or doing something. So thank you so much for taking your time to come through to the podcast. Now, thank you. Thank you, Tatenda, for offering us the opportunity. We really appreciate it. Awesome thank stuff. You. Awesome stuff. If you're new to the channel and you're still around, send through the comment section if you're a parent or if you're a player, we said all the questions that you've got of these guys you can gladly go to them and we always say with the man podcast as well that as gents we need to get to a position where if we are strong individuals we're going to raise strong kids and we're raising strong kids is going to be a ripple effect and a chain effect and everyone is going to be strong strong societies bring out strong leaders and as we all leading in this journey we make sure that we stay one we stay humble and we keep on succeeding my son always say whatever happens what is important is to get the big w and that's the win so thank you so much and i uh, will see you guys soon as you come through with another one remember liking sharing and subscribing it helps us grow the channel it's free so just do that press that uh, subscribe button and like it and share it so that the next person can find relevance in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve from me and the rest of the team thank you so much for coming through and we'll see you again soon cheers for now